Hi, I'm Simon Ravenscroft at National Refrigerants, and I'd like to welcome you to this short guide on F-Gas legislation and why we need to start replacing our refrigerants. F-Gases are fluorinated greenhouse gases that fall under European F-Gas regulations. Some examples are hydrofluorocarbons, usually found in refrigeration and air conditioning systems. Perfluorocarbons are used in electronics manufacturing as well as the cosmetic and pharmaceutical industry. Sulfur hexafluoride is used as an insulating gas in high voltage switchgear equipment and in the production of magnesium and aluminium. As greenhouse gases they contribute towards global warming if released to atmosphere and so their use must be controlled. F-gas emissions in Europe almost doubled between 1990 and 2014, from 54.6 million tonnes to 107.4 million tonnes, whilst emissions from other greenhouse gases actually fell. During the same period, emissions from HFCs increased a massive 563%, from 14.8 million tonnes to 98.2 million tonnes, showing an explosion in the use of HFC gases. In reality, the actual emissions increase could have been much worse. In the 1990s, all CFCs were replaced by HFCs and HCFCs to help stem the depletion of our ozone layer. As an additional benefit, these new HFCs were on average a quarter of the GWP of the CFCs. To control the use of these greenhouse gases, in 2006, the European Parliament introduced the F-gas legislation, aimed at reducing leaks, end-of-life disposal and ensuring only qualified contractors were allowed to install and service F-gas equipment. We have now been using fluorinated gases in refrigeration and air conditioning systems from as far back as the early 1900s when we started to use CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons, compounds that contain chlorine, fluorine and carbon. But it wasn't until the 1970s when it was discovered that the chlorine element had a deleterious effect on our ozone layer. So in the 1970s, CFCs started being replaced with the second generation of refrigerants, HCFCs, hydrochlorofluorocarbons. These still contain chlorine, just less of it, and were used as an interim replacement to allow the adoption of the third generation of refrigerants, HFCs, Hydrofluorocarbons, introduced in the early 1990s, these do not contain any chlorine. So by this time, we are no longer contributing towards the depletion of the ozone layer, but now all the emphasis has shifted towards global warming. And almost all of today's refrigerants are greenhouse gases. This means that they contribute towards global warming if released to atmosphere. All refrigerants are now given a GWP number its global warming potential. The higher that number, the more it contributes towards global warming if it escapes into the atmosphere. To put it in some form of context, CO2 is now considered to be the benchmark, with a GWP of just 1. R404A has a GWP of 3922, making it nearly 4000 times worse than CO2. In a bid to reduce HFC consumption and encourage users to adopt more environmentally friendly options, the F-gas regulations changed. In 2014, the European Parliament and the Council of the European Union introduced changes into the legislation, restricting the sale and use of these refrigerants, along with the phase-out of some of the higher GWP refrigerants. So in 2015, a new quota system began restricting the amount of F-gas products that can be manufactured and sold within the EU. Anyone wanting to manufacture or import F-gas products into Europe must now be a European F-gas quota holder. The quota saw its first reduction in 2016 by 7% and subsequent reductions every three years until 2030 when the quota drops down to just 21%. It is important to understand that the quota is not a tangible kilo base quota, but a CO2 equivalent, meaning the higher the refrigerant's GWP, the more quota it will consume. And alongside these quota cuts, there have also been a number of changes within the maximum GWP of refrigerants used in new equipment, as well as maintaining existing equipment. 
In 2020, a ban using virgin refrigerants with a GWP 2500 or higher was imposed for servicing all existing equipment with a maximum charge size equivalent to 40,000 CO2 kilos. With 404A having a GWP of 3922, you are now no longer allowed to use virgin 404A in a system holding more than 10.1 kilos. So like it or not, these new restrictions mean that sooner or later you will have to change to lower GWP alternatives. So nearly 100 years on from the introduction of CFCs, manufacturers have now developed the fourth generation of refrigerant fluids, HFOs, hydrofluoroolefins. These HFOs are unsaturated organic compounds composed of hydrogen, fluorine and carbon, which are unlike traditional CFC, HCFC compounds that are saturated. These new unsaturated compounds have been developed as non-ozone depleting, low GWP, chemically stable, non-toxic inert refrigerants. Almost perfect, they do however have a downside. Whilst these new compounds do offer a significantly lower GWP, the trade-off is that as you reduce the GWP, the flammability begins to increase. This means that the really low GWP HFO and HFO blends come with the ASHRAE rating A2L, mildly flammable. And despite having American in its name, ASHRAE are actually the global organisation that sets out the standard for refrigerant quality, safety and specification. Traditional HFCs like R404A and R410A are non-flammable and classed as A1. Hydrocarbons such as R290 and R1270 are considered highly flammable and are classed as A3. In between we have HFOs like R1234YF and R1234ZE as well as some HFCs like R32 which are mildly flammable and classed as A2L. A2L refrigerants will burn but their burning velocity is below 10 centimeters a second which is significantly lower than an A3 refrigerant such as R290, which actually burns quite explosively when ignited. The issue around these A2L refrigerants isn't so much that they are mildly flammable, but that in the UK, the HSC do not recognise the A2L classification. So consider these refrigerants in the same class as propane, butane and other highly flammable gases. In the race to find environmentally friendly refrigerants, it seems that all the low GWP options are limited and have trade-offs. Ammonia is a good efficient zero GWP refrigerant but is toxic. Hydrocarbons are low GWP but highly flammable. CO2 is very low GWP, non-flammable and non-toxic but is very high pressure and has raised questions over its efficiency. So is the answer A2L? Certainly it could be, but only time will tell. Thank you, and if you have any questions or would simply like to know more, then please visit nationalref.com or call us on 01455 630 790.